What's up guys, welcome back to another Tesla Talk Tuesday. My, my job starts tomorrow, so I'm excited, also a little nervous because it's some technology that I haven't used before, but uh, nonetheless, pretty excited to get back to work, start getting a paycheck again, and um, well, potentially, potentially buying more cars, but more to come on that. Anyways, Tesla Talk Tuesday, let's jump into the news. There's some interesting stuff that has been going on. So, first and foremost, Tesla. The stock itself has been hitting all-time highs. Uh, it's probably about $300 off of those all-time highs. I think it hit like $17.94 a share, which is absolutely crazy. Over $300 billion in market cap. Absolutely, absolutely crazy move that it's made the last couple of days. I think it's in the 1500s right now, but either way, it's doing some crazy stuff and uh, well, it's definitely notable. Now, second thing, I mentioned this in my last video, um, Tesla Model Y price drop. So I think the performance model dropped by $1,000, so that's now $59,990. And then the cheaper version dropped by $3,000 to $49,990. So the long range all wheel drive Model Y is now starting under $50,000 and the performance version is under $60,000. So it's interesting because Elon kept coming out and saying, oh, Teslas are gonna be appreciating assets. They're not gonna be you know, depreciating like most cars are. However, when you drop the price of a vehicle, if someone goes to then sell their car, they have to sell it for less, which means it's a depreciating asset. So I still don't quite understand or know how he's gonna make it an appreciating asset because, well, he hasn't really ramped up the price of full self-driving. But I guess in theory, if you bump that price every year, that's how you make it an appreciating asset. But I just don't know how feasible that will actually be. Now going with full self-driving, I guess a judge in Germany ruled that like full self-driving and autopilot are misleading, which I completely understand. If someone buys a Tesla and pays the $8,000 for full self-driving, I guess you expect that that means your car can like fully drive itself or even with autopilot, it means like, oh, you put the car on autopilot, the car pilots itself. So I understand why that can be misleading. However, yeah, I don't know, just use your head. Like, I don't know, ask a representative. Like, there's also disclaimers if you actually read things saying like, you still have to pay attention, you have to keep your hands on the wheel, you have to get feedback every so often. So yeah, people are just so dumb. It's just crazy, like the lawsuits and things that come out because of this stuff where it's like, people just don't think. They just like, see something and take it for exactly what it is without thinking about it whatsoever. But anyways, that's that's something new. Now. A better, I guess, better picture, better painted light of Tesla is that there was recently an article that came out from the VP of quality at Tesla. And he basically said that he worked at, I think, Renault, Renault, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a European brand company, so a lot of people in the US may not have heard of it. Um, and then also, I think after Tesla, he went to Audi, but he basically talked about how Tesla is very quick to, to turn around things. So the NHTSA, and <laughs> they did testing and there's a part failure and Tesla was able to turn around and fix that part within five days. Now at a larger manufacturer, you have all that corporate political BS where somebody has to point a finger, they have to figure out the point of failure, blah, 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 blah. Whereas Tesla, it's much flatter and they just fix stuff. So they iterate quickly, they fix things and they move on, um, which, you know, you can potentially have some quality control problems in the beginning, but the point is they get resolved or fixed quickly. So if you see a lot of the videos that come out with early cars, such as the Model S or the Model Y more recently, you might see that there's you know a lot of panel gap issues or like the seats don't fold down properly or um, just whatever it is, just little problems in the manufacturing process. Um, this is part of the reason why you may not want to buy an early Tesla, but what happens is when they get this feedback, when they fix those things, if you take your car back to Tesla service center and get those things addressed, they will usually fix them in most cases, not all, because they've gotten pretty busy now. And I feel like the quality has gone down a little bit because of that. But the point is if you do get an early vehicle, it might be something to expect. However, the good thing is that Tesla fixes this quickly. So instead of taking years to come out with a product and hoping that it's like perfect, but then maybe even dated at that time, Tesla rolls out products quickly, more like a tech company, and then they iterate and fix things as necessary or even change things as they need to. For example, with the Model 3s and Model Ys, they now have USB-C chargers in the back seats, whereas the Model 3s used to have USB, like regular USB chargers, like the, the rectangular ones. but the Model 3 recently switched to USB-C, which is like the more oval-shaped ones, 
and that's to help streamline streamline production and maybe there was more of a demand for it i'm not really sure but um the point is they sort of just make those small iterations they don't have to wait for the next model year they'll just implement that and, and make that change and it's done with it's, it's not a big deal whereas other car manufacturers you won't see a change until they do a new model year and then even then it might be minimal things so it is it's good and bad because it's sort of more predictable like if you wanted to buy a model s you go out and buy a model s they're not really changing a ton on the model s's other than potential like interior trim options and things like that but like if you get in a brand new model s and you get in my model s which is six years old that doesn't even have autopilot it still looks very much the same. It is interesting to hear and see this article from the VP of Quality, and I guess it is part of a reason why you may want to wait and not buy, you know, the very first Tesla Cybertruck that comes out, for example. However, I, I probably will be. Um, so whether or not that's good or bad, I guess we'll find out. Now, just to quickly throw this in there, Volkswagen is going to start selling the ID3 on July 20th. So I think that's when you can like go online and order it. I don't know if the Model 3 is bigger than it technically, but it's a hatch, whereas like the Model 3 isn't technically a hatch. But yeah, July 20th. Now there's an all. Now there's also an interesting video of the Mustang Mach E doing donuts. However, it's like missing some body panels and things like that. So it's it's quite an interesting video, but. I don't know, maybe they're doing like a track mode kind of testing, similar to like how the Model 3 has track mode. Maybe they're trying to figure out, you know, dynamics for things like that. But it is interesting, and I'll be curious to see if there are like software updates like Tesla has with, you know, the Mustang Mach-E or any other electric cars that come out in the future, if they're going to be able to get these, you know, progressive changes throughout the life of the car and not just be like, okay, we sold the car, and then they just kind of walk away and don't have any input on it. The, the software updates are quite nice on a Tesla. It just it refreshes things, it keeps the car more current, and doesn't look as dated. Like if you look at my touchscreen, if Tesla couldn't send those software updates, if you go back and just like Google old, you know, Model S touchscreens from 2012, it looks very dated now. And because they've been able to push these updates, the cars still look like any other Model S you kind of get into. The the um, the menus are all very similar. So at least if you then change cars, if I go to a new Model S right now. It, there's not too much of a learning curve, which is nice because as I've had my car, I've gotten updates and the infotainment and touchscreen has changed, but it all looks exactly like the new cars. I just have some less features of it. And speaking of Tesla stock, Tesla is a, has announced uh, the battery day and shareholder day. I think they're on the same day, September 22nd. And they are actually having it in person, which is quite interesting. So if you do want to see it, uh, I'm sure they'll stream it online too, but it's at 2.30 Pacific time. So that's what, 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. So if you do want to watch that, either go to it in person um, on Tuesday, September 22nd, 2.30 Pacific time. Otherwise for us, 5.30. So yeah, definitely going to be watching that. Uh, the Autonomous Day video, if you still haven't seen it, go back and watch it. It's very fascinating. They talk about a lot of really cool things. So I'm extremely excited to hear, or to hear what they have to say on Battery Day, especially because I hope they sort of touch on some of maybe the capacitor things that Maxwell Technologies, that acquisition could have brought in. So I guess we'll find out, but uh, definitely very excited and, and love hearing about the cool technology that they're implementing going forward. BMW's iX3, the all-electric X3, is apparently going to debut in China by the end of this year and then in Europe in early 2021. So I don't actually know exactly what the timeline is for coming to the U.S., but probably 2021 is my guess. Um, now, it's interesting. I think it has like 280-ish horsepower. It does 0 to 60 in like 6.8 seconds, so honestly kind of slow. It has an 80 kilowatt hour battery, 74 of which is usable, and it can do DC fast charging up to 150 kilowatts, which is what my six-year-old Model S can do at a supercharger. Um, now the range should be around 286 miles, but that's with conservative uh, like testing. So I think real world, it should be around 200 miles, which is less than, than my six-year-old Tesla. So same charging speeds as my six-year-old Tesla, slower by a significant amount, almost like three times slower. Um, range, less range than my car and don't have access to the Tesla supercharging network. Yeah, I would definitely pass on the iX3 um, until you can get those numbers up because that's just, that's just terrible. So I think it was today, pre-market, Tesla stock jumped. Um, I guess there's rumors going around in like the Chinese media that there will be another Tesla Gigafactory in China. So what's interesting is China did 30,000 cars, I think in Q2 in China, and that's 23% of the EV market. 
So like Tesla's crushing it over there. And um, well, part of that is, you know, thanks in part to the Tesla Gigafactory in China, cost savings um, and easier to basically deliver cars. They don't have to ship it from the US. Um, so that's huge for them. And if people are loving the cars, they're just gonna keep buying more. And as more people see them, it spreads by word of more mouth. And uh, yeah, so needless to say, they're doing fantastic things over there. If they do actually open up another Gigafactory, that would be pretty incredible. And I think that is sort of saying how much of an impact Tesla is making, uh, especially in China. So guess we'll look for that going forward. Uh, I'm really looking forward to them breaking ground on the Gigafactory in Austin, Texas to get the Cybertruck up and running. And hopefully, hopefully sometime soon, they will be doing that cross country trip with the Cybertruck and I will be able to see it in person over here on the East Coast. But um, until then, I guess we're just gonna be waiting around. Also, I think that's gonna be it for this video. This video. So if you guys enjoyed the content, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, but until next time, thanks for watching.